party? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Ella, I'm 11 years old, and I live in Boston, USA. When I was five, I was out back roasting marshmallows, and um, the flames were like coming up a little, and they caught on to my dress, and then the heat made the grill explode. My dad was trying to like put them out, and my mom rushed my brother inside and grabbed the hose. It was a third degree burn because it was like a fire, and there are serious scars from my waist up. Some of my scars are here, and then down this arm, and then everywhere, like from my shoulders to my waist. I remember like just panicking and seeing the hospital and just not knowing what was going on. One of the first things I remember after coming out of the hospital is coming home and all of my friends and a lot of my family being there. And I just remember like being happy for the first time in a while. We were so thrilled to get your letter. We have realized like every time we share somebody's story, it seems like there's someone out there that it, it clicks with and it helps them. And Here's the letter. This, this good handwriting stops now. That's the first sentence. <laughs> because I was trying to write everything like really neatly and perfectly. <laughs> I'm an 11 year old girl from Boston. I love unicorns, fairies, and I happen to be a third degree burn survivor. But I'm not going to blab on and start up a big pity party. <laughs> That's not what I do. Stereotypically, girls my age worry about makeup and clothes and boys and blah, blah, blah. I don't bother because I know that I'm so lucky to be alive. That's one of my favorite lines. <laughs> I'm so lucky to be alive. I think all of us can try to remember that no matter what we're going through. Some girls, they're like, I have to go to school. I have to do my homework. And I'm just like, do you know that there are so many people like around the world, especially girls, who would like to do so many crazy things to get to go to school, to get to do their homework, to get to have an education. Like After I was burned, so many people would ask, what's on your arm? Or what's that on your face? I think the hardest part was more after because like, Physical pain, like, it is hard to deal with, but it's more what people say to you, like. I just think the people who ask those questions, like, might forget it by tomorrow, but, like, how long will the person you ask remember? Do you remember anything that helped you to kind of flip the switch and try to focus on positive things, even in that difficult time? My friends. Yeah. I couldn't live a day without my friends. Because it didn't matter to them if I was different. It didn't matter to them if I was weird. To them, I was, and still am, the same girl I was before I got those scars. I knew that she was gonna have scars, but I didn't think they were gonna leave a mark on her personality, and they didn't. I know my shortcomings are nothing compared to others. I have all my limbs. I can hear and count and sing and see and laugh at random things like pig puns. <laughs> and I am so grateful for all that and more. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, your past is not what defines you. It's how you choose to look at the future. It's what's inside that counts. Be so, so, so grateful for what you have and surround yourself with love. Just another middle school girl, Ella. P.S. Yes, life is good. I want to hug now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Some of my words of encouragement to other people are just that it's going to be okay. Other people have gone through this. Other people have gotten through this. So if other people can, you can too. And basically just it's going to be okay. We realized early on that Life is Good isn't about us. It's about a broader community of optimists, and we're so grateful for the stories people have shared through the years. It's a ripple effect. The stories you share help us grow the good. If you have a story to share, send an email to goodstories at lifeisgood.com. And if you want to view more stories, visit us at lifeisgood.com or on social.